is Chime CEO Chris Britt. Uh, Chris, uh, thanks for joining us and congrats on uh, your place on the Disruptor 50 list. Thanks, we're honored to make the list. Uh, so so t tell us exactly what you've done uh, during COVID. I mean, it, it kind of relates a little bit to your, your spot me policy, but you've adapted it. Yeah, at Chime, we believe that banking services should be fast and easy and free. And we do a lot of things to give people access to their money in just a seamless way. So we, you can, if you sign up for Chime and you get direct deposit, we'll give you access to your paycheck generally up to two days early. And we also will let your account go into a negative state without charging you a $35 overdraft fee. Um, and so when the stimulus payments uh, started to come along and we saw that that was coming down the pike, we worked with our bank partners who actually hold the deposits and who we partner closely with to make available uh, the stimulus payments a few days early before they actually arrived in our members' accounts. And to total that up, we, we gave our members access to over $1.5 billion of stimulus payments up to five days before those funds actually uh, were to arrive at the bank account. So that created a lot of goodwill and really drove some of our highest enrollment days in the history of the company. So what would you say is your, is your biggest differentiator, Chris, between Chime and the big banks? Well, we serve a massive consumer segment, mainstream Americans that large institutions are unable to serve without relying on what we believe to be unsustainable fee income. So we've started with a checking account that doesn't rely on fees, and we've provided a bunch of services that really help consumers with short-term liquidity. There's a huge segment of Americans I'm not talking about the unbanked. I'm talking about just regular Americans who live paycheck to paycheck. And we give them access to their paycheck a few days early, and we give them some latitude to take the account into a negative state without relying on, on fees. I mean, the, the, the fees in America are over $30 billion just on overdraft fees that are charged from banks and, and financial institutions. So mm -hmm. that fee income is really a, a large part of the opportunity that we have. And then I think just in general, we stand uh, and we're a company that is very transparent. We want to be helpful and we want to make our members know that we truly have their best interests in mind. And so we talk about a bank account that that has your back. And I think that's something that that, that I'm really proud that the team was able to demonstrate and move so quickly during uh, during this pandemic. Um, Chris, clearly during COVID, uh, with, with lots of banks, branches uh, closed, uh, there's been a, a greater need for digital banking and, and a higher uh, I guess, interest from people that maybe hadn't experienced uh, digital banking before. We've had quite a few bank CEOs uh, on the show, and they've all spoken about how this has driven huge engagement with their digital apps from some of their uh, customers that hadn't yet downloaded them. So has COVID been an opportunity for you to drive engagement, or actually is it, is it a threat if uh, it doesn't give you more of a time, more of a period to disrupt the broader uh, existing players? I think similar to other industries like e-commerce, just look at the trend of e-commerce is up to over 20% of transactions uh, just in the, in the course of a few months. I think similarly in financial services and banking, you're, what you've seen is a massive acceleration to a trend that already existed, which is that increasingly consumers are going to want to manage all of their finances through their phone. The, uh, the, you know, the, there is, for so many consumers, the, the need to go into a bank branch was already low, and if, if anything, it's it's decreased since this uh, uh, since this outbreak. And we've you know similarly seen it with even ATM transactions. We're seeing a massive decrease in the amount of of ATM withdrawals. Not surprisingly, people don't, don't want to touch the machines, and an increased amount of transaction activity within our portfolio, which may be counterintuitive, but we're actually have seen on a per member basis, we've seen transaction volumes actually increase year over year. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks a lot.